started and we can introduce today's session, which Tier is our is our last one of this grouping, um, but we've had a total blast bringing you these repair seminars and we've learned a lot. It's been really, really nice getting to connect with all of you. Um, I We've had some repair shops actually inquire with us about doing some one-on-one -on -one training and we're thrilled to be able to follow up with you about that. I'm gonna keep that page active, ncshires.com slash repair seminar. The prior videos are uploaded there, as well as a link to our parts catalog and any other fun tidbits that we can think of, we'll throw up there for you. Um, I'm sure we'll do this again. There's, there's quite a lot that we can cover. And if it's interesting for you all, or if you want to write in with some suggestions of topics for us to cover in the future, I'm sure, I know we would be thrilled to do this. Um, so stay tuned. We'll, we'll send you another email if we're going to put another round of things together. And that sesharis.com slash repair seminar will stay as an active resource for you. Um, if there's anything, anything that you all need, we we're now all best friends. This is great. Um, please feel free to touch base with us and let us know. Kenny is the face behind repair at sesharis.com. Or if you were to go to our like repair link on the website, he's the one that's going to be fielding all of those questions. So if you need parts or you have questions about um, a technique or the something warranty related, please. We're, we're always here. Um, we were just talking about how it's been really nice during COVID to, while well, we're also separated, but also to be so connected through email and phone and Zoom and all these things. Um, so while it's a, it is a little bit of a silver lining, I guess, but getting to, to speak with all of you each week has been a highlight for me. And it was really funny last week with Joe Lessie being in the shop. He loved that we were all together doing this. He was saying just how transformative it's been for him having a really talented repair technician throughout his entire life. And the fact that we're all meeting of our own volition just to talk shop. He's like, that's really cool. I was like, well, good. I'm glad you were able to make a little cameo and say hi. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to turn it over to James Monahan, who is our general manager. And um, he and Kenny, actually, Kenny, you're leading this session today. And James is the the bench guy today, isn't he? <laughs> so I'm going, to, I'm going to turn it over to Kenny. Kenny, why don't you go ahead and introduce the session? Yeah, this is a far less stressful position that I'm in. So uh, <laughs> definitely looking forward to this one. But no. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll be uh, just kind of manning the chat along with you, Sam. And if anyone has questions, as James is uh, doing some trumpet component repair, pop that in there and I can shoot any of your inquiries to James. Um, but yeah, the guy that you see in the shop now is James Monahan, our general manager. Uh, he can tell you maybe briefly why he is in the soldering chair right now, because he has a very, very long history with the company. Um, but yeah, I'll shoot it over to James and he can get started on our trumpet component repair. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for showing up and uh, logging on to our, our final uh, repair seminar here. The topic today is uh, trumpet soldering. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've been here for about 17 years. Uh, I started in the buffing room, did a little bit of sales, but most of my career here has been uh, assembling instruments. Um, I was our hand slide builder. Uh, here at Shires for about eight or nine years um, before switching over to trumpet assembly when we actually started to make trumpets. Uh, and um, so I, I built, uh, you know, a lot of our first trumpets kind of kind of got, I built our first C trumpet, I first built our first E flat D trumpet, pretty cool. Um, and then, and then uh, sort of started taking over more management stuff and had to train other people to build trumpets. Um, our primary trumpet builder uh, right now is Neil Koble. Uh, he's actually working from home today, uh, so he he got to skip out on this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm at his desk and I'll be uh, uh, repairing a, a trumpet that was uh, recently smashed by a coworker. Um, so that's that's what we're gonna be working on today. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit how I have the desk here set up, um, just to so see you can see what's going on. So I've got trumpet here, recently smashed and somewhat repaired. We're gonna do, um, basically take a lead pipe off, show you that process, put the lead pipe back on, show you how that works. Do the same thing with a bell, like if you have a customer that wants to have a bell swapped or you're taking the bell off to further repair the damage that happened a couple of weeks ago. 
show you how to do that. And then we'll see where we're at and do a couple other solder repairs. Most of the work that I do, um, I actually have the instrument on a bell peg here. You can get these from Allied Supply. It's kind of like a table leg. It's been uh, turned down into a taper. Held in a vise. Um, this is kind of the best way i found to hold the instruments while I'm working on them. I'm going to switch this back around. Static mode. There we go. So you can see i got a vise here. Whoops. Mayday, mayday. Okay, the trumpet's fine. All right, so I've got a vise here on the side. I've got the trumpet peg. This basically gives me a really stable platform to hold the trumpet. I can position it kind of any way I want. I can spin it around. I can make it, you know, basically put it at any angle, get to all the stuff without having to worry about damaging the instrument because it's essentially suspended over the table. Um, solder and torches and stuff we covered uh, last week with Nick. Um, I'm using the same setup. Uh, it's a small acetylene torch with a, uh, you know, pretty, pretty fine flame. Uh, this is a different torch than, than I used to use when I was building, um, but we've, we've switched to these. We used to use um, uh, turbo torch, uh, uh, which were kind of a little more aggressive flame. We switched to these Prestolite style torches. It's a little bit more controllable, a little bit uh, finer pinpoint flame. It's also cleaner burning. Uh, these are really nice. Um, you know, the, the cleanliness of the flame, it's important when you're soldering. Uh, you know, if you have a really kind of an orange flame, you're going to get a lot of soot on the part. You want a nice, clean, bright blue flame on that kind of stuff. Flux, I like the Johnson solder flux um, and 50-50 uh, 10 lead solder for most stuff. Uh, there will be times, especially working on silver plated instruments, where you're going to want to use a 10 silver or stay bright. Um, because that it, it tends to match the silver plating uh, a little closer if you have some staining. One thing to be uh, a little bit aware of is, is the, the type of solder that you use on instruments, um, either especially on these Z braces uh, between the bell and lead pipe here and here, especially on the mouthpiece receiver. Using a tin uh, silver solder is actually going to play, cause the instrument to play a little different than it did if it was soldered together with lead. Um, it's one of the things we do on purpose on some models here at Shires as part of the design. Um, and it's, it's one of the things if you're, you know, repairing a professional instrument for a really high level pro, um, you know, it may be better to stick with whatever solder was actually done originally, you know, and put up with a little bit of, uh, you know, extra cleanup as opposed to switching to tin silver, which may be easier to clean up, match silver plating closer, but also possibly alter the way the horn plays. Anyway, enough talking. I'm going to show you, uh, my process for removing a lead pipe. So um, I like to do this stuff with um, some cotton gloves just to keep myself from burning my hands, keep my hands from turning black from handling all this metal. Um, okay, so my process here is, first of all, I always wanna you know, pull out the main tuning slide a little bit. If you've got the main tuning slide all the way in, and you start heating up this joint here, you run the risk of actually melting some solder between the lead pipe and this outer sleeve, uh, and then soldering the tuning slide in place, which will make your life more difficult. So I'll back the tuning slide out a little bit. I like to kind of leave, leave it in place just to help support everything so I don't, as stuff starts to loosen up, I don't bend stuff around too much. So, all right, so once that's in place, we have uh, just some pieces of index card. What I'm gonna do is basically just start heating the Z brace here and uh, kind of preheat this joint in between the two braces. I'm then gonna start playing the heat from the back side towards the front here. I'm gonna get it from both sides. And what I wanna do is basically just kind of start to See if I can get this index card to slide in between the joint here. As I'm doing this, like the solder starting to wipe away just a little bit. And I want to just kind of slowly separate these two joints. A little bit of pressure. There we go. So I haven't got the card all the way through. You can see I'm just kind of like pressing on the main tuning side just a little bit, just to kind of help separate this out. I'm playing the heat 
across the part, so almost straight up and down. I'm not trying to point the torch directly into the part because I don't want the heat to kind of like heat up this whole tube. I really just want to heat the surface of the Z brace foot here. I want to be real careful not to heat up where the uh, uh, finger hook is, just because I don't want to have to resolder that on as well. And I don't want to heat up this joint here because I don't want any solder that's holding the lead pipe into this outer tube to also leak out. So the more time you spend doing this, the less time you'll spend resoldering things that you didn't intend to unsolder. All right, so there we go. We got card all the way through that Z-brace. You can kind of see it there. So now this can cool on its own. It can, and it won't get resoldered. I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna switch over, do the exact same thing on the mouth pipe receiver. I'm gonna kind of attach the, attack this from both ends here. Uh, same process, I'm gonna preheat the bar between the two, the two, the bell and the uh, lead pipe. Then I'm gonna start slowly trying to scooch the card in from this side. I'm gonna be real careful not to melt the joint between the mouthpiece receiver and the lead pipe because not only is this gonna cause problems on the outside of the horn that they'll have to clean up, but you can also get solder blobs inside the mouthpiece receiver that can start to affect the playability of the horn. And that's gonna be a lot harder to clean up afterwards. So again, preheat the bar in between. If you don't do this, it kind of acts as a heat sink and it just pull all the heat away from where you're trying to work. So just kind of cook this a little bit to preheat it. Now I'm gonna start heating again, just across the surface of the Z-brace. I'm going to kind of scrape with the card. Solder starting to bubble just a little bit. Now obviously, when we build trumpets here at Chires, we try to do them with as little tension as possible. And I'm confident that this trumpet was also assembled with very little tension, but then we smashed it. So it's very possible now that this joint is gonna be under a lot of tension. There we go. Cool. So once that pops free, slide that card in there. That'll keep it from soldering itself back together. It'll cool. Two more solder joints that I've got to let loose here. There's this, uh, this flange here, the shield brace that's attached to the lead pipe. I'm gonna let this guy go. The last thing I'm gonna do is this uh, tuning slide brace over here. That's gonna be the last one that I'm gonna let go. So this will basically get the whole lead pipe kind of freed up and all of this can start to, to get loose. Same idea, I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna pull number two piston out for a sec. Just to, basically keep myself from burning up the pads and the felts underneath there or, or screwing up the finger button. Um, that's really the only reason for that right now. Same idea, I'm gonna play the heat uh, primarily on the leaf pipe. Again, kind of across the joint as opposed to like directly into it. Give myself a little bit of upward pressure on the leaf pipe, just for the crack. I'm gonna take the card that I've already got. Almost. There we go. Slide this through, there we go. Cool. So the reason I do the outside joints first is they're easier to get to. They're easier to get the card in there. Um, and it's just a little easier to have access to. This brace in here, it's a little harder to get the card in. As you see, I struggled with a little bit. So I want to give myself as much kind of like wiggle room to, to pull this out as I'm, as I'm heating it up. Okay, last thing. These are all cool. I can get rid of the cards. I'm going to pull out the main tuning slide, set that aside. Last thing I'm going to do is uh, basically take this brace out here. Um, so these sockets on our horns are brazed onto the outer tubes. That's going to be, uh, you know, that's not going to come undone. 
there's a rod that's soldered into the, uh, the socket here that is going to get loose. So I'm going to play the heat uh, right on the rod, right on that joint. Again, kind of from both directions. Once it starts to twist, whoop, there you go. James, I got a question for you. Uh, we have a question in the chat. With a lacquered horn, um, yeah. have you found any good way to prevent burning the lacquer uh, for someone who maybe doesn't have uh, all the tools and equipment necessary to relacquer a horn? Is is there any way to mitigate the burning of the lacquer? So, not really. I, I haven't found any any sort of magic bullet. Um, you want to try to minimize burning of the lacquer. So playing the heat on parts that are going to be smaller. So like, just like heating the Z-brace, if you burn the lacquer on the Z-brace itself, like that's, that's going to be a little more forgivable than burning the, the lacquer all the way around the lead pipe, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, being really conservative with the heat, heating the parts up slowly um, will help. Um, Cause like a lot of times, the surface of the lacquer will heat up really quickly and burn before the part gets anywhere close to being hot enough to, to melt the, the solder. If you heat the part up slowly, the lacquer tends to, you know, you don't have to kind of overheat the lacquer to get the part to melt. So you just kind of warm the whole thing up really gently. And that seems to, to help, you know, mitigate or prevent or at least reduce the amount of lacquer that you burn. But, uh, you know, for me, I, I don't have a good, a really good magic bullet. Um, there's some things to protect areas that you're not directly heating up. Uh, we talked a couple of weeks ago or last week about this kind of like burn gel or just like cooling gel stuff. This is uh, cold coat, um, which is a nice product. Um, quick question, can you guys see me in reverse or am I pointing the right direction here? You're, no, good. you're good. Let's okay, good, I'm, I'm, it looks, it's a mirror image on my camera. Okay, anyway. So that product works really well. It's kind of like this weird gel stuff. Um, and, and it kind of helps coat parts of the instrument that you don't want to, to heat up. Um, it's kind of messy. So, you know, for us, we don't tend to use it here. We have the, the luxury of having people that buff things for us and then they lacquer things for us. We're, we're a fully functioning, you know, factory here. So um, that gives us a, a bit more, uh, you know, freedom to, to repair things. You know, often if, if there's a lacquered instrument that needs a solder job, we'll strip the whole thing, solder it, buff it, relacquer it, it'll look brand new. Um, but you guys out in the field most likely don't have all of those resources. Uh, another question, James. Uh, do you mm -hmm. think, uh, is, is there tension at the braces um, that may cause resistance in the way the horn plays? Um, tension anywhere in the horn can, can kind of screw up the way the horn plays, for sure. Um, it's not like a, it's not always consistent how it screws it up. It's not like everyone would describe it the same way. But, you know, in my experience, when there's tension in the horn, either in the way that it's soldered together, or even like, I, I was talking with someone earlier today, um, water key screw, right? There's, there's the water key, there's this little screw, there's a spring here. If this screw even is over tightened, like really cinched down, it'll make the horn play stiff and, and somewhat brittle. Um, if you back that screw off and it's kind of loose or the spring tension on the screw is not quite tight enough, the horn will play kind of unfocused and, and kind of floppy. It's, uh, it's remarkable how much how much of a difference just that amount of tension anywhere on the horn makes a huge right. difference. It's we the same as trombones. Go ahead. We found uh, something similar to this to the benefit with our E-flat trumpets. Um, the bell tail, um, our, our E-flat trumpets are tuning bell, uh, so you can switch out an E-flat bell and a lead bell. Um, we now build them with a screw on the bell tail ferrule. Um, and you can tighten and loosen the screw. And I know in my own play testing, adding some tension to that bell tail ferrule really, really changes it. You can screw the screw down a little bit tighter and it really locks in the slots and loosen it a little bit for a, a little bit freer blow. Um, too much one direction is detrimental, but for each person, you can find a sweet spot in there. So yeah, absolutely. Tension, good tension can be okay. Good amount of tension. Uh, 
too little tension might make the horn play, like James said, too unfocused. Too much tension will make it feel very, very tight and, and difficult to play in the upper register. So there you go. Um, you know, the rule of thumb with solder joints uh, really is you want to spend enough time, make sure that all of your braces, all of your joints, are are sitting as flat and and kind of like making contact as as neutrally as possible you don't want to have to like hold the lead pipe down as you're soldering it and wait for it to cool because it's going to spring out that's going to add tension you also don't want to have a, a big gap that you have to kind of fill with solder that's going to be not enough tension not enough connection right too much solder so like really making sure the braces fit and are kind of formed properly makes a really big difference. Um, so I'm gonna continue here. I'm gonna put the camera down, show you what I'm doing next. Uh, so while Kenny was uh, talking, probably noticed I started uh, cleaning up the solder on all these joints here. So basically what I'm doing is kind of heating up the surface and then using a, a shop rag to wipe away the the excess solder that was left behind when I took the stuff off. Um, I'm trying to, to pay attention as the solder's melting. Um, solder's a, uh, an alloy, our solder's an alloy, 50% lead, 50% tan. Those two metals have different melting temperatures. And what happens is uh, as, as you start to heat up the solder, one of those metals melts before the other. And the solder goes from uh, essentially a, a state between solid and liquid, it goes into a plastic state. Um, you'll see, if you pay real close attention, you'll see the solder go from solid to kind of like a, a pasty, dull liquid that's kind of, um, I don't know, it's pasty. And then if you keep heating it up, add some flux, it'll turn bright and very liquid, very smooth. Um, so when I'm wiping solder away, I try to get it just to that plastic state so I can just kind of wipe it away and it ends up just kind of sticking to the rag here or I'll wipe it with my gloves. Um, I don't want to heat it all the way up to the full liquid state just because it's too much. It's, it's not necessary and I'll end up burning my hands and overcooking stuff. So that's just something to kind of, kind of pay attention to as you're doing it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the uh, lead pipe here. I'm going to show you how I have this set up. So when I'm working with stuff in my hands, I'll, I'll kind of switch modes here. And I've got a kind of holder here on the edge of the desk that holds the torch stationary. So then I can use both hands, I can work around the flame and get to all the stuff. I'm going to clean up this extra solder here on the mouthpiece receiver. Uh, here, really carefully, just playing the heat kind of across the part, waiting until I see a little bit of a color change. And then here, I'm just wiping the solder away with my glove. Um, this kind of stuff, I, I, I kind of like compare it a lot to whittling. Um, I want to do a little bit of heat and just kind of chip away at it. I don't want to go in here really aggressively, heat up the whole thing and just try to wipe this all in one shot. You know, a lot of times as I'm doing this, I'm like, I'm just barely kind of kissing the surface of the flame. And, you know, even before I see the solder make a color change, and pulling the part out and wiping. The other thing that I do is, is I have my hands really close here, so I'm already set to kind of wipe the joint as I pull it out. It's kind of one motion. I'm not over here cooking it, bring it over here, look at it, get my hand out, and then sort of wipe. A lot of our craftsmen will use Q-tips also to wipe away the solder, and uh, we have pipe cleaners that we like to use as well. Yeah. I, I, I built stuff back, back in the time when we didn't always have, uh, you know, couldn't always afford Q-tips and pipe cleaners. We always had our hands, so. Um, <laughs> the joys of growing a small business. So that's, that's nicely wiped, it's nice and clean. Cleaning this part up over here. That's good. So I'm gonna do this last spot over here. This is getting warm. 
just a spray bottle sprayed down with some water, the parts that I've just wiped, just so I don't keep burning my hands. Back when I primarily built trombones for a living, my hands were largely fireproof. Now I sit in a really nice office that Kenny's in now. I have soft hands, kind of a drag. <laughs> Kenny's hands are softening by the minute, just sitting in my desk. It's tremendous. Yeah. There's some lotion in the drawer if you need. It's... All right, all right, all right. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> all right. So as much fun as wiping solder joints are, I'm done. All right. So we're going to basically just reinstall the same lead pipe. I'll show you how I, I kind of fit the braces and make sure everything fits together without any tension. So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that uh, this socket still fits over the post here nicely. Um, I wanna make sure it's kinda, it'll, it'll fit and spin and kinda go down the right amount. Uh, I can see still the stain of, of where it landed last and I just wanna make sure that it goes down, actually beyond that, there should be a little bit of play here. It shouldn't bottom out exactly um, at the bottom of the socket. You want to have a little bit of float just so you know that it's in the right space because that's where it is without tension, not because it's just forced there because the part's too long. If this did bottom out and I wasn't happy with this, I would come in with a file and I'd actually file the face of this down, uh, you know, 16th of an inch or something, give myself just a little bit of a float. This was built very nicely. It's got the right amount of clearance. I'm happy with that. Next thing I'll do is put the main tuning slide back in because that is going to dictate the uh, spacing and alignment of the main tuning slide here, uh, of the lead pipe. So I'm going to slide this in all the way, make sure that I have, there we go, uh, no gaps here and here. Uh, you know, I don't want to make sure that the lead pipe isn't like, uh, the skew one direction or the other. This fits very nicely. This is all straight. I'm happy with that. Before I start soldering, I'm going to just back this out slightly because I don't want, again, to solder the main tuning slide into the lead pipe. Um, that's will make your life more difficult. Okay, um, now we're going to look at how this lead pipe fits on the horn. Like I said, this trumpet was recently smashed on purpose, so it's not perfectly in alignment anymore. I've got a little bit of a gap here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little clicky. This is actually pressed tight against here. I need to get this to sit just a little bit flatter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and just try to bend this C brace down a little bit. Let's pull this out. This guy out. I'm just going to pull the tip of this down ever so slightly. One of the benefits is I have the instrument supported by the bell. So the mandrel, whoops, mandrel's actually tight against the bell in here. This helps support the bell. So as I'm pulling on the Z braces, you're not, not as likely to crush the bell. Um, I did drop the lead pipe, which is embarrassing. Something I always needed to check for when I was uh, laying a lead pipe across the braces is there also might be a lot of excess solder on the Z braces and the cluster brace. So be sure to check the cup of the Z braces as well when you're, when you're looking at the trumpet like this because the instrument may have been repaired before and there may be <laughs> spoonfuls of solder sitting in places where there shouldn't be. Yep. So I did check all that and rewiped everything. So I'm pretty happy with the amount of solder that's there. So I can actually see the lead pipe is, the, the lead pipe's hitting the Z brace right here at the backside. Um, and it's causing a little bit of a gap at the front here. So if this were my desk and I had all of my tools, I would have um, a hand file that's about, that wide um, comes to a point 
the back side of it's flat, the front side of it is somewhat domed. Um, basically a uh, very similar radius to what the Z brace is here. And I'd actually go in and, and sort of file the face of the Z brace to create uh, a little bit more clearance right here where the brace is um, making contact. I'm just gonna snoop around Neil's desk real quick. See if he has the file that I'm thinking of. Nope. So we're going to ignore that. Just kind of soldier on ahead. All right, I'm going to stick this lead pipe guy back on here. Pretend it's adjusted properly. Everyone's happy. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to solder the back side of this. I'm going to put a solder clip. Um, just on the back side. Not that the clip is needed to really hold it together, but I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, as the solder goes in between the joint, starts to cool, doesn't actually push the joint apart. Um, so I just want to make sure I've got a little bit of little bit of pressure right there. I've got the main tuning slide all the way in because I'm not going to solder this spot yet. Um, I've checked this brace; it's laying really nicely. I don't see any massive gaps. If there were, um, I've got my scraper here. It's a triangle triangle shaped file that I have uh, ground uh, the, the front half of this um, into sharp sharp edges with a blunt point. The back side on the tang, um, I've got a piece of coca bola, which is the wood we, we used to use for our um, lever pedals and trombones. I glued it onto the tang and I've got, um, uh, I kind of sanded it down to a bit of a point, kind of a, kind of a blade shape. And I'll actually use this wooden side of the scraper to, kind of burnish the corners of uh, a flange and kind of reshape them up against the part if if like there's severe gaps or it's not quite square because it got smashed. Um, so this I can actually use to kind of burnish and reshape the uh, reshape the flanges so that they they fit really nice and flat against everything. Uh, this won't mar the finish of the horn. It won't kind of scrape up stuff. You can put kind of a lot of pressure without worrying to about kind of scraping or gouging stuff. I'm gonna solder this guy now. Um, let's see. How do I want to do this? Let's see if you can see this. I I I like to solder these. Let's see. So I kind of like to solder these from the top, from the side here. I'm gonna get it kind of at a weird angle for me, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll move the solder clip down to the bottom. All right, that feels pretty good. So, a little bit of Johnson solder flux. Not a ton. I'm just going to kind of put just exactly on the joint that I'm trying to solder here. I'm going to play the heat just here at the tip. I want to have my entry point for the solder be this spot kind of right here because that's gonna be the easiest to clean up, kind of the most forgiving. And uh, then I'm gonna basically use heat to pull the solder down towards this really tricky part of the, of the mouthpiece receiver. I don't wanna preheat the receiver too much because that'll start to melt the receiver in the lead pipe. Go. There we go. Check it from the other side. Nice. Okay, the pipe soldered. I'm happy with that. Once this, I'm gonna let that sit for a second and then move on to this joint here. Same idea. Just a little bit of flux, exactly where I want the solder to go. I'm gonna play the heat here in the back 
and add solder here in the back of the horn underneath here. Uh, that way if there's excess solder that I have to wipe, it's out of view of the customer. Um, and the top of the trumpet's gonna look nice and shiny. There we go. So I've got just a little bit of a gap here at the top, this side of it, but I'm continuing to add solder down here at the bottom because uh, I want to have just the one entry point. So I'm heating the spot where I want the solder to go. Then I'll heat a little bit where I want the solder to be added. And heat will pull the solder through the joint around the other side. So that now, if you can see that, is a complete solder joint on this side as well. That looks good. Uh, I would continue moving forward, soldering this joint and soldering this guy. I see we're uh, getting a little short on time. So if anybody has any more questions about this, I may skip ahead to the next, uh, the next little bit of soldering I've got planned. No questions yet, James. Yeah, I think we're good to move ahead. Cool. All right. I'm going to cool this off because I'm inevitably going to grab it and burn my hands. So the next thing that you guys will likely encounter when a coworker smashes your trumpet, um, this instrument, as we were smashing the bell tail, we, uh, we uh, lost our first slide leg here. So this is the, the first slide leg inner on here. It became unattached in the smashing. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys my technique for getting this soldered back in place without uh, and, and readjust it so that the slide continues to work properly. A um, little bit of work I did ahead of time just to, to speed things some up. Once this, I got this free, um, I cleaned the inside of this barrel really, really very uh, thoroughly. Um, again, I'm just using this, this triangular scraper. And what I do is basically use the scraper to kind of um, resurface the inside of the tube. Um, and the way I, I do this is I tend to hold the scraper stationary and then rotate the part around. As you see, I'm getting like a lot of really good chips. It's, it's actually cutting, cutting material out of this barrel. It's gonna give me a little more clearance than was there originally. You know, maybe a thou, maybe half a thousandth of an inch, um, which is not gonna be a problem. It's gonna give me a little bit more flexibility to make sure that this is soldered together without tension. Um, and that the alignment isn't, isn't uh, bad before I even get started. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the tube fits in the slide itself nicely and there isn't any weird gaps here. Um, I had to solder the inner into the ferrule as well because that had come loose. So I did that ahead of time. Uh, again, just playing the heat on the ferrule, soldering from in here, pulling the solder up into the joint. Um, I had a little bit of solder bleed kind of at the bottom of the ferrule. So I just took my scraper and grab it, grab the corner of this and just kind of scrape this edge so that it's a sharp right angle corner. Just kind of like that, if you can see it. All right. Now, once that's all done, this fits together nicely. I'm going to insert the slide and then basically use the slide to set the space here. I've got a little bit of clearance here between the ferrule and this knuckle that I've created because I want to make sure that the knuckle isn't pushing everything kind of way out of whack. I can feel like as I push the slide on, I don't feel like the knuckle is getting torqued or it's not under any tension. It just kind of glides over, the ferrule glides over the knuckle and that's going to be perfect. So I'm really happy with that. What I'm going to do next is just start to solder this ferrule and I'm going to tack it in place. This is going to be the trickiest part because I'm going to leave the slide fully inserted. I don't want to heat the ferrule so much that the uh, you know, solder comes out of the knuckle and then solders the outer to the inner. I'm going to pull the piston out just so that it doesn't serve as a giant heat sink and pull heat away from the knuckle where I'm adding it. So adding some flux. 
Ooh, it's kind of weird and upside down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take the second slide out just so I can see a little better. There we go. Just to reiterate, James, I think an important part of this is there is slide gel uh, in the slide at this A little point. bit, yeah. Yep, not a lot. Okay, you can see like that's literally just a little bit of solder right there on the surface. Now I'm gonna back this out just about that much. Okay. Now I can, I'm gonna do this at a better angle for me, pull that solder around the joint. Flip it around, make sure I got the back side. Making sure you've got the joint filled back here is, is important. It's a little tricky. Just because it's so close to the casing, it's hard to see if you've really completed that joint. That looks good. Great. All right. That is looking happier now. Cool. So I've got that joint, that got that soldered nicely. It is complete all the way around. It's solid again. So I'm gonna cool it off, wash away the flux. That'll keep it from you know getting kind of etching and causing more problems later on. While I'm here, I'm gonna give it a quick rag just to clean up some of this char and get a little of the extra solder off. I have a couple pieces of, um, what is this? Flannel, a uh, little like soft cloth. What I'm gonna do is um, basically, I've uh, applied some Tripoli buffing compound on here. I'm gonna very lightly go over the top of this with Tripoli first. Um, just kind of snake this through here. It's hard to do with gloves on. James, we had a question. What are you using to neutralize the flux? Water. Yep, just tap water. Um, the, uh, the Johnson's flux is water soluble. So that washes it away just nicely. You don't need like, for this application, you don't need to like worry about like soaking it in caustic solution or stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's a very mild, the flux is a very mild acid heat activated. So as long as you wash it off, with with water that's going to be fine for now so just a little bit of ragging see that just to clean that up go over here one more time that looks pretty good last thing i'm going to do a similar piece of cloth this with our um red rouge buffing compound this is this is what we use to get our mirror finish on instruments um it's a little aggressive for silver plate so i want to be careful um but for a solder repair like this that's what i'm going to use it can be a little more aggressive especially like where the solder staining is that's good Flip it around get the other side It's a nice little shine. There we go. And that is a nicely repaired first slide. Look at that. Yeah, I, I, I still got it somehow. Okay, um, one of the things you'll notice is the slide does not move all that great right now. I mean, it, it, it fit, fit with as little tension as I possibly could make it. But you know, as it cools, everything moves a little bit. So right now the slide is kind of bindy. So I'm confident that the uh, outer is parallel because we checked that before. What I'm gonna do is just a little bit of exploration. I'm gonna push on this knuckle a little bit, push it out with my thumbs, see if it gets better or worse. Squeeze it, see if it gets better or worse. Push it this way, push it that way. Feels like it's getting better if I spray it out, splay it out a little bit. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna put the first valve back in. 
just to help support the casing. So I don't inadvertently deform the casing and make the piston not work as I'm doing this. So I'm gonna basically use the first slide as a little bit of extra leverage. Push on this crook here. Just push down ever so slightly. See if it got better. It did. Again, kind of squeeze every each direction. See if there's any spot that makes it feel worse. Out still makes it feel better. So I'm gonna push it a little farther. Yeah. Just about there. One more little tweak. Yeah, that's good. Pushing each of the four compass points. That way made it feel a little better. See if there's any one direction if you push that makes it feel a little bit better. Conversely, if you push, if it all feels kind of terrible, but one direction makes it feel worse, just go the polar opposite of that, that direction. Great, this, this feels great. This is working fine. James, if you're dropping that slide, would you ever use lapping compounds? Not on this one. There's enough clearance um, and the surface finish is smooth. So like, like I can feel individually the legs are smooth. They're not gritty. They're not binding. Um, so I don't think there's any surface finish aspect of this. What I don't want to do is create too much clearance, which will short term make the, the slide feel better a little bit, but it's also going to make it more prone to binding when it gets out here because it'll be able to kind of sit off off center, kind of like canter itself and then bind. So in this instance, I'm happy with the surface finish and the clearance. So I'm just going to focus on parallelism. And we had a question too. Um, how much of this process is the same in what we do to build a trumpet versus the repair that you're doing right now? Very similar. Um, with the, uh, so this, this process here, soldering this upper leg, it's exactly how we build the trumpet. Um, we, we solder the lower leg in first, and then we use the tuning slide and the lower leg alignment to make sure the top is, um, you know, to solder this together with no tension. Um, so that part of it is, is exactly the same. The same for mounting the lead pipe. The, the process for mounting the lead pipe is the same, except that when we're building a trumpet, we, we build the cluster first with all the slides. We make all the slides work perfectly. Then we mount the lead pipe. And the lead pipe is mounted just with this brace here. Then we'll mount the bell. The bell is mounted with this brace here. And then we add the Z braces and solder both sides in together. So. We basically are, we have the freedom to adjust both feet of the Z brace one direction or the other so I can make the Z brace fit between the two perfectly. Sometimes that's adjusting the bottom foot, sometimes it's adjusting the top foot. Can excess solder affect how an instrument plays? Excess solder, um, where I mean, if if you if you leave a lot of solder on the outside of the horn with you know at the, you know kind of without cleaning it up, wiping it away, uh, it looks bad. Yeah, it's going to add weight. It's going to change the way the horn plays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cosmetically, you want it to look nice, right? You want to you want to use the right amount of solder inside the joint. You want to wipe away the excess on the outside. If there's solder that's bled through on the inside here, so if you've got solder coming through this joint and it's like beating up inside the horn, that's obviously going to change the way the horn plays. It's going to be terrible. Um, you know, as we're building these fresh, uh, we, we build the trumpet, but then we go into to the casings with uh, our little, little USB, like micro camera, and we'll actually scope inside all these knuckles and just make sure all the things were lined up the way we thought they did and make sure there's not any excess solder. Um, so that's actually really, really important to our process. Our trumpet finaler goes through um, specific parts of the instrument with a boroscope to see if there's any solder on the inside of the bore because that absolutely can affect intonation, um, slotting, any number of things, the sound, and yeah, any excess metal, I think, on the outside of the instrument will change how the instrument plays. That's why a lot of players might use heavy valve caps on the top or bottom or put weights on different parts of the instruments, different weight uh mouthpiece receiver can affect how things play so yeah any excess metal 
or you know less metal in different places can affect how the horn plays. Good. Well, last thing, if we've got time or if there's more questions, you guys tell me. You've got time, and if there are more questions we can address them, okay. no problem. So the last thing that Kenny requested uh, that I show is uh, tuning slide repair. So not on our instruments, but on other instruments, you may find that, oh no, the uh, lower leg here, the upper leg of the tuning slide has become unsoldered. Sometimes you'll see, like I, I've seen on on Facebook and the re the repair groups that I that I stalk, um, you know, people complaining about, you know, makers instrument makers not using enough solder or trying to skimp on solder by not filling joints. And you'll see a joint like this where, you know, the where this tube was soldered into the ferrule, there's just brass, there's no solder, and there'll be like a tiny little bead of solder right here at the joint, and and that's often attributed to a lack of carrying, a lack of solder, just cutting corners, that sort of stuff. And one of the things is, is it's something that we've struck, we've encountered here ourselves, and, and it happens from time to time. The, primarily what happens when that's happening, it's, it's one of two factors that's causing it. Either the parts that you're fitting together are actually fitting too tight, so this tube is too tight in the ferrule, and there's not enough clearance to actually allow the solder to flow between the two parts. So there's, there's no gap, there's no, there's no clearance, the solder just physically can't get between those two parts. So it just pulls up on the outside, you wipe it away, and you have no way of knowing that the solder didn't actually get into the part. The other reason would be uh, contamination, either grease or dirt or tarnish even. Um, all those things will prevent solder from flowing properly and will cause the solder to just collect right here on the outside and that actually get into the parts. So. Um, Either way, this thing came apart. I took it apart because there actually is enough solder. But for our purposes, let's pretend it broke. Um, I'm going to put it back together. There's a couple things I'm going to do ahead of time. First thing I'm going to do is going to make sure that the end of this tube is really clean. I want to make sure old solder is gone. I want to make sure any tarnish uh, is gone. I basically want a clean, bright part. So what I'm doing is I have a little bit of 2400 grit micro mesh. It's a paper-backed adhesive product, kind of like sandpaper. Comes in a variety of grits. Uh, the company sells it directly, micromesh.com, maybe, I don't know. Um, Google it. Uh, but they, they have uh, a lot of products. This is the 2400 grit. It works great for almost everything. 1500 is a, a bit more aggressive. We use that somewhat sparingly. Um, we're also using the really fine grits, uh, 6,000, 8,000, 12,000 grit. It, it feels like just like satin at that point but it's a really really fine abrasive you get almost a mirror polish with it um really great product all right so i clean that up you can see like that's that's a really nice surface finish got a little bit of lead still left over but it's shiny i'm happy with that the other thing i'm going to do is prep the inside of the ferrule the same way i did the first slide i'm going to go into my scraper and i'm just going to scrape inside of the ferrule as flat as I can get. Um, basically holding the scraper flat against the part, not at a weird angle, so I'm gouging it or putting like marks on the inside. Just trying to get a nice, clean, sharp edge. And I've got the tip of the scraper right up against the crook. That's why I have this uh, flattened to a, a blunt point. It's a square point as opposed to like a really sharp pointy point. Because I can actually use the face of this scraper to also carve the kind of right angle against the face of the crook as well. So once that's nice and happy, I'm really happy with the shininess inside of here. I'm happy that there's not any excess solder on the face of the tuning slide crook. I'm also happy that there's not any like solder blobs inside the crook that I could pick away while I have access to it. Dump out the chips. All right, so now I've got this put back together. This is fitting nice. I have clearance. It's a snug fit. It's not super loose or, or sloppy, but it's also not tight. I'm not having any trouble inserting it, twisting it around. It's happy. So the other thing is, it's got a little bit of wiggle here. You can see that I can actually kind of 
rock it a little bit. I want to make sure that this is perfectly parallel with the instrument that it needs to fit with. So I'm actually going to use the instrument as my jig. I'm going to put the tuning slide in. I'm going to leave it out about that far. So I'm, I'm, I'm relying on the lead pipe that I just soldered on perfectly uh, to set the tuning slide spacing. And now I'm just going to solder this leg back into place. I'm going to apply flux right here at the joint. I don't worry about the flux, like pulling the tube out and fluxing the inside. When the parts fit properly, um, the space between those parts creates what's called capillary action. The surface tension of the uh, flux itself actually draws itself into the joint. So I rely on that to actually pull the, the flux into the joint. Light it up. So here I'm going to play the heat basically right in the first, like, I don't know, 16th of an inch of the ferrule, like really close to the edge. Not all on the tube, but definitely not way up here. I don't want to melt the solder between the crook and the ferrule. I don't want to play it way up here where I melt this brace. I just want to play it right where I want to add the solder. Kind of going all the way around. There we go. A little bit at a time. I'm trying really hard not to get solder up on the silver plate, just because it's a little harder to clean up. There we go. That looks really nice. All right, let that cool off just a little bit. You can see, got a nice, uh, nice little solder joint there. Silver, you heat it up, gets this just like kind of really white milky texture to it. That's just a little bit of uh, oxidation on the face of the silver plate. A little bit of rouge compound, or also um, uh, Matchless makes a green uh, rouge compound. It's a green, green compound that works really well on silver plate. Um, we use that as well. So that's cool. I'm gonna finish cooling it off. Rinse the flux off. Wipe everything down. Two things I'm gonna do here. Make sure the tuning slide slides nicely. Make sure it's not sprung, like, like the tip of this isn't under any weird tension. And when you pull the main tuning slide out, it doesn't go whee. This feels great, slides nicely. I'm going to use this as a fixture because it's, it's handy. I'm going to take the strapping that I had before. I'm going to more aggressively kind of like rag the, uh, the inner of the tube here. Get some of this uh, solder staining off. Hit the camera a couple more times. That looks good. Come around and get the other side. Coming with some rouge on the silver plated part, really just to shine it up, make it look presentable. There we go. Really nice. There you go. That's a reconnected uh, main tuning slide. Perfect. Bravo. All right, that's all I got. Exhausted my uh, my solder knowledge. You guys, uh, any questions, comments, suggestions? Hmm. I don't see anything yet, James. Um, all right. My biggest advice for really any solder repair is, is take your time, go slow, um, especially when you're applying heat for the first time, uh, you know, try to, try to, try to be as, as uh, conservative as you can. Um, adding solder, make yourself go slow, add a little bit at a time, just use patience, pull the solder around, take the time to fit the parts properly, take the time to scrape and 
prepare the parts if you can. Uh, you know, get them bright and shiny and clean, uh, not greased. Make sure you don't have like tuning slide grease on your hands because that'll get everywhere and, and make the solder not go where you want it to. Um, condition of the flame, you know, uh, like I mentioned earlier, kind of a nice bright blue flame is really nice. If you've got a, a kind of a dirty torch and you've got a, a red kind of disorganized flame, it's gonna, it's gonna suck. It's gonna score and, and, and add a little lot of um, soot to the parts. Also kind of knowing where the, where the part of the flame is that you're supposed to be working. Like I really try to work right at the tip, right at the point of that flame. That's where the, the heat's gonna be most concentrated and you're gonna have the most control. If you're way out here, you're gonna heat the parts up slowly, but you're also gonna heat up a much bigger area. It's gonna be kind of a soft hair dryer effect. You know, you're gonna heat the whole thing up. And by the time you get it hot enough to solder, the whole thing is hot enough to solder. Conversely, if you're really, really close, like right at the entry here, the, the flame is bigger. And again, it's gonna heat up a larger area incredibly quickly and you'll still overshoot where you want to, to heat up. Those are my life lessons. Love it. Well, I have a couple of housekeeping things. Um, first of all, we had a suggestion, I think it was from Nick Miller. Nick, was it you that suggested that we have like a, just maybe like a round table discussion sometime just to have a really informal, everybody can turn on their cameras so we can just kind of like talk shop one day, which I would love, we would love to do that. Um, yeah. We can, we can look and see in terms of a time frame. like be fine with me if we just kept this time for next week, if we wanted to, um, that might be the easiest thing if, if the timing works for everybody. Um, if, if you have like any immediate suggestions where like next week at this time it doesn't work, pop it in the chat really quick. But otherwise, maybe we'll just plan on doing that. Um, could be really fun. And it'll just, let's just do that. It'll be really low key. Yeah, Nick, okay, awesome. That was a great suggestion. Um, really low key and we'll just, whatever, we'll just hang out and talk shop. It'll be less formulated. Um, but I also promised some swag through this. So I, with everybody registering, we did a raffle. So while we were talking today, I did a random number generator. So I pulled six winners because why stop at five? Um, so I will contact these six winners. They might not all be on the session today. Hopefully they are, if not just tisk. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll get you set up with some Shire swag. So the first winner is, let's see, Chaz from Pages Music. Second, woo. Woo Second is <laughs> Chuck Champagne from Arts Music. Um, Chris Lindstrott from Quinlan and Fabish. Ryan Mott from Roberts Music in like my neck of the woods in Rhode Island. Um, and Frank Calhoun from West Music. And oh, is that six? Let me see. What did I? See? One, two, three. Four, five. Last is Kevin Tinker from Amro Music. Nice. Super. Right. So I will I will contact our winners um, from this raffle stuff and it'll we'll get you some shire swag. It'll be fun. But this has been a total blast for us. Let's let's do one more. If everybody wants to join Gray, I will um I'll think about the best way to disseminate the information to the slackers who aren't on this call. Um, and I'll also post it maybe on etsyshires.com slash repair seminar that we're going to have a low-key hang next week at noon. Bonus Same. episode. Bonus episodes. Yeah. yeah. Super. Everything's That's a great idea. I think, yeah, I think it's a great yeah. idea. Uh, we can get some of the people that were involved earlier in the session as well. We can send them in and that way you could have an opportunity to ask Chuck or, or Sean or Paul or Nick, Nick questions as well. I think that would be great. Super, super, super. And if anybody's interested in doing more with us, um, setting up a one-on-one -on -one training for your shop, or if you have other questions, always feel free to shoot us an email, let us know. Um, it's, it's what we're here for, for sure. And this is a really great connection to have with all of you. And Dylan, yeah, Chuck and smash a bell. Um, I'm sure that we can make that happen at some point. I, I think Dylan, you'll have to provide the bell. <laughs> I think if you can send us a bell. Music and art's gonna, it can do it. Just, we'll call someone up there, it's fine. Perfect, okay. yeah. <laughs> There's, there's plenty, there's plenty in around. So, um, James, Kenny, anything else from you? I think I'm no, good. I, I, 
yeah, thank you, thank you all for joining. It's 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 great to see this amount of interest in in kind of what we're doing. It would have been awkward to do this for like a three people. So thank you guys for joining us. It's been it's been a blast for us. Um, everyone that's been involved has enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to next week. And uh, yeah, as always, stay in touch. If there's any questions, concerns, problems, don't hesitate to reach out to us either at info at seshires.com. You can get a hold of Kenny at uh, repair at seshires.com. Uh, our phone number as well. All the contacts on the on the website. Um, yeah. Everybody here is is um, you know available and and more than happy to help help you guys with anything that comes up parts questions advice all of that nick miller is queued up and ready to go with a bell for our next smash episode all right or smash our smash showed <laughs> well pop it in the mail our address is on the website put in attention me james and uh i'll i'll get it get it ready oh my gosh so fun all right so and then we'll send it back to you when we're done <laughs> we'll, we'll flatten it in the seam roller it'll be great oh, um, we could do that we could do that that'd be some wall art some nice decor <laughs> well thank you everybody and we'll have our informal hang next week at noon and i'll post about it on the site scshires.com repair seminar and this video will be uploaded as well for your reference later on but Thanks to everyone for joining and thanks to our raffle winners. I'll, I'll send you all an email and we'll get you some swag. So cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>